Hi, welcome to Raw Math. Today I'm doing a series of videos on lines and graphs, and in this case, function notation. Um, one of the points of function notation is the idea that if you have multiple equations, if you use function notation, you can name them by the letter of the function. This isn't g times x. g of x is just another way of saying y equals negative 5x plus 4. This isn't f times x. It's another way of saying y equals x squared minus 15. And this is not h times x, it's just another way of saying y equals 24 over x. We use function notation for several reasons. One of them is if you have multiple equations, it's easier to tell them apart. The other reason is what is inside the parentheses is the input. In parentheses is input of the function. So this is saying, hey, let's put 11 in for x as the input of g of x. This isn't g times 11. It's negative 5 times 11 plus 4, which is negative 55 plus 4, which is negative 51. So g of 11 equals negative 51, which also means the ordered pair 11, negative 51 is on the graph. And function notation is nice because the order is correct. All right, f of four, that means I wanna substitute four in for x for my second equation. So four squared minus 15 is 16 minus 15, which equals one. So f of four equals one. In other words, four, one is a point on this graph. If I put in negative four, and I'm gonna continue with the parentheses, negative four squared minus 15, I use the parentheses because the negative is being squared along with the 4, so this is really negative 4 times negative 4 becomes a positive 16 minus 15, showing that f of negative 4 is the same as f of 4. In other words, negative 4, 1 is a point on this graph. All right, g of negative 7. Substitute negative 7 in for x for the g of x graph, so negative 5 times negative 7 plus 4 negative times a negative is a positive. So g of negative 7 equals 39. In other words, negative 7, 39 is a point on this graph. h of 0, 24 divided by 0, putting 0 in for x of h of x. You can never have 0 in the denominator of a fraction, so this is not a point on the graph. Zero is not in the domain. Domain defines what inputs are allowed. So this isn't a point on the graph. This isn't in the domain. We are going to say undefined. We say undefined whenever there's a zero in the denominator, and that's just how we're going to end it. Negative 18, however, works. 24, negative 18. I'm going to reduce this. I'm going to divide a six out of top and bottom, and I'm going to move the negative up top. So it's negative four thirds. I'm not going to go to uh, decimal, which would be a repeating decimal, which would mean I would have to round and bring an error. I'm not gonna go to a mixed number. They're clunky and hard to deal with. I just want h of negative 18 to be negative four thirds. In other words, negative 18 comma negative four thirds is a point on this graph. Okay, so in all of these first six examples, you are given the input and you have to calculate the output for our ordered pair. In the last two, it's the opposite. This is saying find x if y is equal to negative 46, specifically in our first function. So g of x is negative 5x plus 4, and we want to know when does that equal negative 46. All right, so what we want to do is we want to subtract 4 from both sides. So that negative 5x equals negative 50, divide by that negative 5, x is equal to a positive 10. In other words, g of 10 equals negative 46, or 10 negative 46 is a point on the graph of g of x equals negative 5x plus 4. Okay. For our next one, we have f of x equals 34. So f of x is x squared minus 15. This is just a name. It isn't multiplication. That equals 34. Okay, so I am going to add 15 to both sides. x squared equals 49. Now x squared implies two solutions. Whenever you see an exponent, 
That implies the number of times this graph could cross the x-axis. And when you're solving, that's really what you're doing. You're trying to figure out what values of x make y zero. In other words, when does the graph cross the x-axis? In this case, it's going to be twice because when we find the square root, when we as a solver of a problem introduce a square root, we have to acknowledge that this x could have come from a negative 7 or a positive 7. In both cases, when you square it, you get a positive 49. So um, f of negative 7 equals 34, f of positive 7 equals 34. So negative 7, 34 is a point on this graph, as is 7, 34. So we get two solutions for the price of one. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my Facebook page, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks!